You've got that new RV with that new RV smell. You're all excited to get on the road and see the sights, but don't go yet. There are things you need before going on that fantastic trip you're about to embark on. Now, I'm not talking about things like food in your fridge or camping chairs to sit on when the weather's nice. I'm talking about the essential things that you just can't do without or that you may need in case of an emergency. If you don't think about that, you could be in for a world of hurt. Now, we own a Class B that uses 30 amp power. If your motorhome uses 50 amp power, you'll need to find the equivalent items for that kind of system. First off, you need a surge protector. For those times you hook up on an outside power like 30 or 50 amp, you know, like at an RV park. RV parks are notorious for having rather sketchy power and the surge protector will protect your expensive RV from harm. There are various brands and ours a 30 amp model is running around $240 as the making of this video. Of course, if your rig uses 50 amp, you would have to purchase a 50 amp surge protector. We bought this brand specifically because you can purchase a replacement surge protector. So if the original gets damaged, we don't need to buy an entirely new surge protector. As of this recording, it's running about $35, so substantially less than having to buy a whole new unit. You'll also want an electrical cord, preferably 10 gauge and probably about 50 feet long. That way you can plug into regular household current if there are no 30 amp outlets available. Also, you may need to step down the amperage on your electrical system since you're using a household current. Review the specifications for your RV to make sure. And speaking of outlets, you'll need a uh, 50 amp male to 30 amp female adapter. NBC gave us a small one, but I had already bought a dog bone style adapter like this, so use that instead. Remember, we're going from 50 amp household current to your 30 amp RV. If you have a 50 amp RV, you'll have to see if there's an adapter for this. Again, review the specifications for your electrical system to see what you need to do to change the amperage. Although we don't have one, you may want to consider a 50 amp to 30 amp female adapter if your rig uses 30 amps. This is used in case there is only 50 amp service and no 30 amp available, wherever you may be staying. You'll need one that will take the 50 amp current and bring it down to 30 amps. You never want to plug in 50 amps directly to your 30 amp RV. I don't know much about these types of adapters, so you may want to do more research before you decide to get one. This is our fresh water hose. You need one that is drinking water safe to fill up your fresh water tank. They usually come in blue or white so you don't mix it up with the uh, gray hose, uh, which is not for drinking, but to dump the gray water tank. In our case, we attach this hose to our existing gray water hose so we have a little bit more length if we need it. When we're filling our fresh water bladder, we use a set of filters to make sure that the water going in is as clean as we can get it. We have both a filter and a pre-filter system for our needs. And because of our RV design, we use a, a water tank filler so we can turn the hose on and off as we fill our water bladder. A little simple system, you just turn it on and off right here. Like that. Now because of how we fill our fresh water bladder, we don't need a water pressure regulator, but you may. RV parks need to move water all around their property, so the pressure may be very strong in some places. The regulator will make sure you don't damage your RV with excessive water pressure while hooked up to their system. If we were using our city water hookup, we would want a water pressure regulator, but we always use our water directly from the bladder and fill it up when needed, so are never directly connected to city water. We have a composting style 
toilet, so we need to carry pet bedding for the solid waste compartment. It reduces the chances of some unpleasant odors. We also need trash bags to dispose of the waste. And speaking of disposal, I would highly recommend disposable gloves for those times that you may need them. Since we have a compostable toilet, we don't have a black tank, but if you do have a black tank, you'll need a sewer hose to empty the waste. There is usually one that comes with the RV, but if that hose is not long enough to reach the sewer, you may need to purchase a sewer hose kit just to make sure that you can reach what you need to to empty your black tank. And since you have a black tank, you will most probably need sewer and septic safe toilet paper, uh, something that will dissolve so you don't end up with a clogged and potentially very messy black tank. No matter how you travel, there is always a possibility that something can go wrong. You want to be prepared for the unexpected, so we carry a tire inflator for times when the tires are low. We've already used our Blair tire inflator once and are so glad we got it. You may also want to carry a tire pressure gauge to check the tires periodically. We have dual wheels in the back so ours can check those as well. If something happens to your battery, you may need to use a jump starter. Ours can also be used as a portable power bank charger and even a flashlight, so it has multiple uses. If something happens where well, you need to make some repairs, you'll need a tool kit of some kind. Ours comes with a hammer, pliers, screwdrivers, wrenches, a utility knife, and a lot more. For other types of emergencies, a first aid kit can be useful. You'll want one that includes bandages, alcohol pads, pain reliever, things like that. You can buy one or just create one, just as long as you have something when things don't go as planned. And speaking of things not going as planned, you might want to pick up a set of emergency lights. Ours came with the lights, thermal blankets, and a window breaker, and a seatbelt cutter. If you happen to know the types of fuses your RV uses, you will want to get a set of those. These fuses are used to replace in an emergency. That's something we still need to look into, but it's on our list of things to do. And finally, don't forget a flashlight. If a fuse goes out, you may need a light to see. This is by no means a complete list, but I think I've covered most of the items you'll need for anything that comes up during that first amazing trip you'll be taking in your RV. If you want to see a list of the items we bought for our RV, click on the Roads of Life website link below. Be seeing you. Mm -hmm.